I'm Lee Hartman, and I'm a composer, conductor, educator, musician. Uh, my background in music is uh, I started on tenor saxophone when I was in an elementary school, and I was immediately told I couldn't play sa tenor saxophone because there weren't tenor saxophones in the band. It was only alto saxophones allowed. Uh, and so uh, from the beginning, I've always been kind of that problem child, I guess. Uh, but uh, I had that musical drive to really want to succeed. And so I took um, private lessons and uh, on saxophone and then decided I wanted to be a band director when I was in uh, high school. And then that kind of changed when I got into college and discovered composition. And uh, then that was at the University of Delaware and then moved to the University of Missouri, Kansas City for my master's and doctorate. And I've been in Kansas City for the past 15 years working and making music with my friends. Yeah. Uh, the projects that I work with now, I have my own composition projects, but uh, my big um, artistic output is the Mid-America Freedom Band, which is an LGBTQ plus and allied community instrumental ensemble. And uh, we have about 80 members. They've been going for about, we're entering our 16th season. I've been their artistic director for six years now. And uh, it's a great group of volunteer musicians who give up their time and musical abilities and to come make music together. Having LGBTQ uh, groups and ensembles like that is vitally important even today, uh, especially today. Uh, a lot of these groups were founded during the AIDS crisis uh, to give um, hope and uplift, uh, perform for funerals. That was, that was where they started. Um, and then pride parades and marching bands like that. Uh, and, and then we kind of lulled ourselves into a safe place uh, with, I think, um, with some Supreme Court wins and things like that. And then just to see how quickly everything, uh, landscape can change again and how you can feel so on edge and not safe in your own skin and not trusting your neighbors um, to be able to come and uh, know that for these two hours of rehearsal, I'm in a room where I'm going to be loved. Um, I'm not going to be judged. I'm contributing to something that's not just myself. It's to make something. I think that's really important to have uh, those spaces. I think we were doing the wrong thing if we had auditions because so many people have been told by um, someone in their community, someone that they love, a religious figure that you are less than. Um, I never want anyone to feel that way when I'm on the podium and when they're sitting next to someone in my group. Like I want, this is a spot, this is a space for you. You're here because you're important and you are welcome. Uh, the mid America Freedom Band, um, as an LGBTQ and allied ensemble, I felt this, there's a possibility for social good and social change in this group and to really be more than just a community band. Because we have lots of community bands in Kansas City. So what can we do to be different? And for me, that was, well, if we are the other, if we are the not normal, let's champion the not normal. And so what are every, what is everyone else doing and let's not do that. So we program women composers, LGBTQ composers, um, um, composers of color. Those are our, our main focus of our programming and performance. A lot of new music, a lot of local composers. These are the voices that need to be heard. Because if you're a community band, you have to be representing your community. I don't think many communities anymore are made up of dead white Europeans, men. Um, I don't think that that's a community anymore. Finding that queer representation in my own music has been a challenge for me. And I think it's because I write instrumental music more than vocal music or uh, uh, dramatic works. Um, I have started doing uh, some pieces that they're queer in title and queer in intent and in remembrance of um, queer people. Like um, I wrote a piece for a band up in Minnesota called Song for Edie. It was um, right after uh, Windsor, uh, the case was decided and, you know, recognition of same-sex marriage. Um, and then um, and then I was in the middle of writing another band piece uh, when the Pulse shooting happened down in Orlando. And I don't think I've cried that much in a long time. Like that was, 
like I don't I, I didn't know any of those people but it was it, it was us that was an attack on us um, and so um, the entire piece changed um, and it was a uh, vibraphone piece with band and so what happened was um, I was just writing this piece and it happened to be in three parts and then I found this uh, a quote um, in Fragile Bark or the Tempestuous Sea, the Common Harbor. And it's from a poem talking about old age, but I just thought that those three sections lined up so perfect, those three chunks of text lined up so perfectly with the sections of music and what I was feeling at the time that uh, that piece became a pulse piece. And so I started doing all these 49 hits because there were 49 uh, souls lost that day. Um, uh, I wrote a fun piece with Samuel Barber on the lighter side. Um, Samuel Barber uh, grew up in my hometown of Westchester, Pennsylvania, and he was one of the big gay American composers, you know? He wrote this letter to his mom when he was 10 years old, begging her to not make him go play football because he doesn't want to be an athlete. He wants to be a composer. And it's just this earnest um, expression of... I'm not like the other boys. Um, and so I, I found that text and I was like, I have to set this. The classic music field is a narrowed, closed door system um, with very little opportunities. Many of those opportunities are pay to play. Um, like right now, any one of us could write a piece for orchestra and go over to Eastern Europe and pay $10,000 and they'll record it. And like, but I don't have $10,000 lying around. Um, uh, so much of what happens is it's who you know. Um, it's disgustingly white male. It's what summer festival you've spent thousands of dollars getting to attend, um, who you play tennis with, um, who, who, um, who you studied with at your prestigious institution. Um, that's how you get in. Um, and so what we have now are people who are creating such great music, who are being drowned out by the same voices all the time. And that's, again, that's what I try and do with the band is I try to diminish the sameness and elevate the excellence of others. Um, because uh, I want to be that um, amplifier of otherness. Like, hey, there's other stuff out there that is great. I've been in Kansas City for uh, 15 or 16 years. It's where I've spent my entire adult life and entire career, musical career, basically. Um, and uh, I've seen a lot of things change over the years. Most, uh, the biggest, obviously, is the Kaufman Center for, for Performing Arts. Um, to see the symphony rise from when they were in the lyric to the level that they're now playing at in Hellsburg is great. I just wish they were more adventuresome in their programming uh, and championed new music and championed, especially women composers. Like, I think this is the first year that we've had more than one in five years, which I'm like, it is not that difficult. It is not that risky. Just do it. Um, all you have to do is have the will to do it. I think that people are making their own opportunities now because I think that the cost of living in Kansas City uh, is such that you're able to do that. I think that the artistic initiative and inventiveness is here. And I think there's an audience. Like it's a good town with good musicians, good composers, and good audiences. So be bold, be brave, and challenge all of them. Oh.